<clears throat> that is two 5090s and a Threadripper. Great news. Finally got in the 9000 series of Threadrippers from AMD. That's right. And you can get them at your local Micro Center starting today. So your 9955WX going all the way up to the 9995WX. <sighs> And these are some really impressive CPUs. I mean, they're very powerful. So today we're going to build a workstation. <laughs> and what do you think we should do with this workstation? Oh, we could do anything, really. I mean, this motherboard has server grade IPMI, which means we can remote in anywhere in the world. So we can get into BIOS if we wanted to, turn it on while it's off if we wanted to from anywhere. Oh, that's impressive. So yeah, this is really, this is going to be a multi-use workstation. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. And we pulled out all the stops for this guy. Now for the CPU, we went with the 9965WX, 24 cores. Yep, 24 40, cores, 48 threads. 48 threads, oh my goodness. Okay, and that's just the start. I mean, it goes out, only goes up from there. Oh yeah. And then we paired that off with this Asus Pro WS, WRX90E Sage SE. Yeah, that's it's a mouthful, but it's a heck of a motherboard. <laughs> yeah, this one's gonna be really good. <laughs> but that's not enough because we also had to get a bunch of memory. Ooh, so Kingston Fury. ECC memory or error correction code memory. Yep, flip those bits if they go wrong. I have 128 gigabytes here. I have 128 gigabytes here. That That's is 200. Yeah, 256. That is bigger than my first SSD was. <laughs> and a lot faster. Yeah, too. this is way faster than your first. <laughs> Speaking of fast SSDs, we paired this off with the Samsung 9100 Pro. Definitely one of the fastest SSDs we have at Micro Center, Gen 5 SSD. This is a one terabyte. I think this is enough for what we need just to get started. Yeah, just to get started. I feel like this guy's gonna have a lot of spinning drives in it one day. Probably, yeah. And luckily this case has a lot of room for spinning drives. We went with the Fractal Divine 7XL. This is one of my favorite cases from Fractal Design for home server use because it is pretty insulated in the front, but there's still good airflow. So you don't get a lot of noise, but you get plenty of air to those CPUs. To power this behemoth, we went with the Silverstone Hella 2500RZ. I'm so excited about this. I've never seen a power supply that big that runs off of 110. Yeah, that's gonna be really interesting. So. Fortunately, our power needs here in the studio are enough to supply this. So we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna have no circuit breaker issues. Yeah. Hopefully. One, two, three, 12 volt, two by six. Four. Wait. There's a fourth one. There's four? Yeah. Power a lot of GPU. We have the PNY RTX 5090. This thing is gonna have plenty of power for anything we're going to need. That's just one 5090. We do have a second 5090. I just have to take it out of our table over there, but I oh, think yeah. we can pair them both together, fit them with ease. I mean, with this much 12 volt two by six. Basically 64 gigabytes of DDR7 or GDDR7 VRAM. Yeah. 256 gigabytes of memory. Oh my goodness. So AI, obviously, you can fit some big models there, but yeah. I think there's a lot of other uses as well. He was talking about Linux and some oh, yeah. Windows shells. I don't know, he knows that stuff. I feel like he's just making it up and I'm just, I, I don't have a way of disproving him. For the cooler, we went with an AIO. We have the Silverstone here, the XE360 TR5. Mm -hmm. So the biggest question I have for you, mm -hmm. have you ever installed a Threadripper? No, I have not and I'm really excited because don't they come with like a, a torque wrench? Yep. To make sure you get the pressure correct. That's all you. This is a very expensive CPU and I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that they make it as simple as possible. I mean, they I mean, are very, very. One, two, three, it's written right there. Yep, to open, you have to go screw number three, screw number two, screw number one, and then you do it in a reverse order for closing. Yep. Uh, Heard a click, three, two, there's a lot of quirks about Threadrippers just because of the sheer size. Yeah, I mean, I, right. I, I was shooting the uh, the 7000 series a couple weeks ago, and they're nearly the same size as a whole Raspberry Pi, <laughs> which is insane. The uh, scope of compute in that same size. Yeah. <laughs> so that popped up, but it doesn't feel like it popped up all the way. So I'm gonna go back to three, just double check. Yep. There it is. I missed a thread on two. So and you can just slide it right up. So this will pop. Oh, okay. Up. So that's like the frame, right? That it slides into. And then you see there's also a socket cover. Okay. So that's fairly safe. Mm -hmm. You can remove this little shielding, right? Okay. And then that one you can slide in. And okay. then when you're ready, then you can remove the socket cover to have okay, it. Okay. So you're, the, the pins are exposed for as little time as possible. Yes, exactly. And this guy is on a carrier frame, so that's a good way to sort of get it installed. We slide this in. 
There you go. All right, and then just pop up here. Mm -hmm. Now I would keep a hand on this because it's- Yeah, you don't want to just slam down. There's a lot of weight that's on that frame. So it's definitely like a two-handed process. All of those pins. That is a lot of pins. None of them seem bent, which is good. All right, so let's slide this down. Oh, that's spring-loaded, I forgot. So to close, it's one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Torque wrenches that I've used in the past, you'll like feel them give out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't feel that, so that was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, the mechanics on the socket side, like you'll feel it kind of just, yep, just be done. Yeah. It's a very tactile thing. It's hard to sort of show on camera. It's something that you just kind of feel when it's happening. Yeah, see, All right. you feel when you're at the end of it. And that's it, our Threadripper is in there. Awesome, it is a big CPU. So what is this advising us about? I think it's just- Single PSU, dual PSU. I, I think the whole idea is that one, the like one power supply is going to supply your um, like CPU and PCIe and motherboard. Mm -hmm. And the second power supply, um, there's like a patch cable, at least for this motherboard, there's a patch cable. Uh, for the second power supply motherboard. So you get that, you know, jumper pin. Mm. Um, but then also it's just one CPU, one PCIe. And then whatever GPU power you have to supply for, because that's where you're going to kind of like evenly yeah. distribute. Only remove the expansion card from the end closest. The ones where like when you uh, remove it, it's just like it, you got to catch it at that right angle to remove it. It has uh. a name. I forgot the name for it. We know how to do that. All right, cool. So you just installed your first Threadripper. That was... Not as nerve wracking as I was making it out to be, I guess. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's actually pretty easy. For this kind of build, we're not putting that much RAM in. You yeah. can have up to two terabytes of RAM in one of these Threadripper builds, and this we're putting in 256. Yeah. yeah. This is really on the low end. And 256 being considered the low end in of itself is. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> That's a lot. I gotta say, the AIO here is so simple in design and implementation. I mean, this is literally just a rad, a plate, tiny pump inside, that's it. All right, do you want big eye fix it or little eye fix it? Little eye fix it for this, thank you. That should do it. I think this is all one piece here. Oh, I see there's a little fan there too. Yep, this is all actively cooled. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a fan, a fan header. Yeah, and this is this whole thing is one solid heat block. Well, that's good though, because if you do want to go all Gen Five with your SSDs, you have that option. Oh, especially with these thread rippers, because they have up to a, I think it's 128 lanes, which is just insane. That is nuts. <laughs> Fans in the VRMs. Yeah, actively cooled VRMs, which is nice. I mean, you're gonna need it. Yeah, I thought I needed to take off this panel, but I did not. That helps channel some of the air. It looks like over the uh, the heatsink for your SSDs. Socket covers, hang on to these. Oh always. yeah, always. Put them in your motherboard box. You never know when you're gonna upgrade or if you're gonna sell your old parts or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just want them. Right off the bat, that looks clean. Yeah. Like that's clean. Oh, I almost missed the peel. There's one on the back of this board. Oh yeah, you have all that stuff on the back you have to peel off. But I do like that shield there to kind of protect all these little soldering points. The ones that are capped uh -huh. are for your second power supply. Leave them capped. Okay. So let me ask you a question. For a build like this, mm -hmm. Windows or Linux? Por que no los dos? Okay, true. <laughs> Yes, so you can what, do both. What I would do is I would install Proxmox. Uh, uh -huh. Proxmox is a type one hypervisor, which means that it can have guest operating systems. Mm -hmm. So you can have Proxmox and then a bunch of different virtual machines with different amounts of RAM and different numbers of CPUs for different right. purposes with whatever operating system you want. I actually just learned how to uh, virtualize my NAS operating system because I didn't like the operating system as much for all my right. other server stuff, so I don't have to run my server stuff on my NAS anymore, but it's the same machine. Right. So it's it can be super helpful. Oh, that's cool. It's nice that we have a big turntable, but also uh, it's kind of annoying yeah. <laughs> having to move everything out of the way because it's so big. Fortunately, today... Oh, pre, I didn't even think about that. Pre-applied. Thank you, Silverstone, for yes. making our jobs even easier. It's a cool pattern too. It's like a perfect like little grid pattern. So once that pressure is applied, it'll just, just spread. Just it right out. She's looking good. I think she's good. 5090 Astral. Yeah. 5090 buddy. PNY. For the sake of today's build and for the sake of a lot of VRAM. Yeah. There we go. Those magnet bowls are a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. 
you can get them at your local micro center. Ooh, boy. Yeah, I love the I love when you have to caddy corner your GPU to get it in. Yeah, and then some. I got this in before. Did you? Really, I'm just, what is this cable in the That's way? That's one of the 12 oh. volt two by six. That's what I'm trying to avoid. All right, so 15090, all set. In place. Oh boy, this is a this is a lot. It's a lot. That's a it's a very heavy computer. You ready? I'm ready. Let's see it. You want to do the honors? Sure. Woo! Ooh, hoo, hoo. There's. Well, there is RGB now. Yeah, because we put the astral, so there is. It's not fully. Dang. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? We're gonna get an OS installed. You think yeah. dual OS, Windows? I'm thinking and... all the OSs. Yeah. Proxmox. That way we can do a virtual machine of Windows and then we can just turn that off and turn on a virtual machine of Linux and test both without having to do too much. So we're definitely gonna be doing a lot with this machine. So do stay tuned. Uh, Jacob is gonna play around with this a little bit. A little bit. And I think we're gonna do some really fun things. Definitely an AI follow-up. Definitely a follow-up on a couple of other things. So yeah, stay tuned. Make sure you stop by your local Micro Center. Get your hands on a new Threadripper out today. And if you don't have a Micro Center near you, then be sure to comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me. I do.